As humans mine and refine a crucial element necessary for technological advancement, they are destroying the earth, leaving enormous gouges in its crust, polluting the air, and contaminating the ground. Hey guys what's up, today, in this video, we're going to tell you how scientists have made a powerful material that doesn't exist on Earth at all. It certainly sounds like the premise of a science fiction film. One day, while examining a meteorite from another planet, scientists find a special metal that eliminates the need for all of the pollution and excavation. The metal can be remade using simple materials in a lab, which is the best part. The world has been saved. Okay, we slightly overstated the story there. No aliens, for starters, unless you know something we don't. The rest of it, however, is correct. Reportedly, two scientific teams, one at Northeastern University in Boston and the other at the University of Cambridge in the UK, announced that they had successfully created a material in a lab that does not occur naturally on Earth. It has only ever been discovered in meteorites up until this point. The material in the meteorites, according to Laura Henderson Lewis, one of the professors on the Northeastern team, is a combination of two base metals, nickel and iron, which were cooled over millions of years as meteors tumbled through space. As a result of that process, a special compound was produced with a particular set of properties that make it perfect for use in premium permanent magnets, which are a vital part of a wide variety of cutting-edge machines, from electric cars to space shuttle turbines. Tetratanet is the name of the substance, and the discovery that researchers can produce it in a lab is very significant. Green energy technologies might become significantly more affordable if synthetic tetratanite proves successful in industrial applications. Additionally, it might upend the market for rare earths, which is currently dominated by China, and cause a fundamental shift in the relative industrial strength of China and the West. Earthly, but oh so rare. Magnets are an essential part of any piece of machinery that runs on electricity, as all of our viewers will undoubtedly recall from their high school science courses. They are the conduit that transforms electric power into mechanical action. The majority of magnets are fairly affordable and simple to manufacture, like the magnet in the battery-operated clock hanging on your office wall, for instance. On the other hand, the so-called permanent magnets used in cutting-edge machinery must be able to withstand great pressures and temperatures for extended periods of time. They also require a special component, a rare earth, in order to acquire those qualities. Rare earths are not all that uncommon. They are substances that exist all over the world. Getting them out is the challenging part. You have to dig them out of the ground, for starters. That's difficult enough. Then, since they are frequently combined with other elements or materials, you must separate them. It is expensive and messy to break down and refine these compounds to obtain the raw materials. The China Syndrome Before China discovered a vast deposit of these elements within its borders in the 1980s, the US dominated the rare earths industry. So this is how the story unfolds. A few Chinese companies started operating iron ore mines in Inner Mongolia, and the waste they produced ended up in their tailings piles. The Japanese were purchasing a lot of this iron and asked if they could sample the waste piles. The Chinese responded, sure, take as much as you want. A short while later, the Japanese returned and said, we'd like to buy the waste. The Chinese then responded, well, why wouldn't we sell it to you? Truly, it's a waste. How are we going to use it? Well, it turns out, it was rich in rare earths. Pretty soon after, the Chinese realized what was going on and started extracting these rare elements themselves. They could do it much more affordably than anyone else because their labor costs were much lower, and they were prepared to accept the significant environmental costs. The US stopped producing pretty quickly, and China effectively took over the market. At present, China is in charge of more than 71% of global rare earth extraction and 87% of global rare earth processing. Because neodymium and praseodymium, two of these rare earths, are essential ingredients in the production of permanent magnets. China now controls the permanent magnet market as well, producing more than 80% of these expensive instruments. This didn't seem to be an issue 10 years ago. China was a willing and cooperative trading partner, 
and in 2004, the U.S. actually outsourced the manufacturing of magnets used in the guidance systems for American cruise missiles and precision bombs to a Chinese company. This indicates that China was seen as being unthreatening by the U.S. Relations with China are more tense now. Additionally, as we transition to a clean energy economy, there is a growing need for both rare earths and permanent magnets. This is why it is so exciting to learn about synthetic tetratinite. For all but the most demanding pieces of machinery, permanent magnets could be made from the compound due to its extreme toughness. If that occurs, the U.S. could eliminate its need for some rare earths and fill a significant portion of the magnet market on its own. And it would result in a significant change in American relations with China. But it will take a while before tetratinite can seriously threaten any already established markets. To determine whether laboratory tetratinite is as durable and practical as the space material, there is still a lot of testing to be done. And even if it does, it will take five to eight years of pedal to the metal before anyone can use it to create permanent magnets. What is your opinion on this new rare earth? Let us know in the comments. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching.